A bit of good news, the wildfire smoke from Canada, not much of a problem anymore. The bad news is the heat impacts are spreading from Texas into the southeastern U.S. Looking quickly at our climate indicators, not much going on really. Even the Madagulian oscillation is weak. It's trying to enter phase one and phase eight, but not really doing anything. The Pacific North American oscillation is decreasing down to neutral. Everything is pretty much near neutral. There's your night sky this evening, right around sunset, looking out to the west. Mercury and Mars very low on the horizon. Arcturus about halfway up. And this is going to be the weekend of the Perseid meteor shower. Now, Perseus is not visible in the evening. It rises as we get into the hours after midnight. There it is, rising along with Jupiter. And Perseus is significant because that is where the Perseids radiate from. So you're going to see the meteors emerge from that direction. So this is about 2 in the morning, and you can see that constellation gets higher and higher as we get into the pre-dawn hours. Let's take a look at that surface map. It's starting to look just a tiny bit like fall. Fresh outbreak of Canadian air coming south. Temperatures back behind it. Not very cold at all. Still in the upper 70s. However, the tropical air, you can kind of tell that by the dew points. See the lower number, 74. That's very rich moisture. And that goes all the way up towards Chicago, up to Gary, Indiana, up to Fort Wayne. And that defines the warm sector. So that's the wedge of warm air right up there at the triple point, which is over Lake Michigan. Warm front extending out towards Ohio and the Appalachians and another frontal boundary through the southeast, and that's triggering some storms as well. And we've got a, another area of storms up there in the Kansas City area. Let's take a look at that on AWIPS. And we see what looks like some elevated convection up there in northwestern Missouri. We're looking for some more surface-based convection, possibility of some supercells up there around and north of Kansas City. That whole area is under an enhanced risk from the Storm Prediction Center this afternoon. And you can see those dew points. There we are. We'll pause that in Kansas City, 91 over 77, up to the northeast, 89 over 77. So some very rich moisture, considerable moisture right up there ahead of that cold front. That's what it looks like on the satellite imagery. It looks like not much in the way of low cloud fields. However, the high resolution rapid refresh not going for very much development until the nighttime hours, like around 10 or 11 p.m., especially up there in northeastern Missouri. Looks like a few severe cells there, but they become a little bit outflow dominant. And looks like also the possibility for some storms later tonight around Chanute to Springfield. And the heat wave continues across Texas, Oklahoma. We've got 110 at Wichita and Altus. 105 at DFW, 101 at Houston, 103 at San Antonio. And we've got hundreds all the way back into the New Orleans area, 100 right there. That's kind of rare for New Orleans. And as we get into Florida, we don't see 100s, but there is considerable moisture, dew points in the mid to upper 70s. So we've got excessive heat warnings all the way from Altus to Miami, and even as far south as Laredo and as far north as Tulsa. Texas is hotter than Arizona or southern Nevada right now. We're located in Texas, and I'm telling you, it's been just relentless. You can kind of tell people are getting cranky and irritable out there. Our air conditioner is struggling just day after day of heat, no relief, our AC gets a rest from 4 a.m. to 10 a.m., then it grinds away 18 hours nonstop. And that's pretty common because even out here, people's air conditioners are not really rated for 105 degree weather. And as you probably saw, they are getting monsoon storms throughout the Painted Desert, the Four Corners, the eastern Mogollon Rim back into New Mexico. And looks like a lot of it is dissipated in southeastern Arizona, but a lot of anvil material from Fort Hachuca down towards Nogales, and it looks like a little outflow boundary taken off south right there. 
And returning to that surface map, you can see that the monsoon activity is not really related to the fronts up north. This is kind of an area of moist advection coming up from the south, kind of a very slow infusion over many weeks as the moisture gets drawn northward. And you can see the dew points up at 61 at Tucson, 57 at Phoenix, and 62 up there north of Yuma. And a little highlight, these pressure lines and the thickness lines, those are generated by the Canadian model, the GEM model. I found that they work the best for this presentation. And the plots on here, this is METAR in synoptic data. This is transmitted directly from the observing sites. Anyway, a little bit of trivia. Let's head out to the Pacific. Not much going on offshore, although we have another frontal system approaching the British Columbia coast. Further up north, there's been a lot of wildfire smoke advected westward into northwestern Alaska, and it's even reaching into Siberia. The warm air mass a little bit to the south there and up to the north, some cool air flowing in from the Arctic region. So we're starting to see some cold air advection starting in the Northwest Territories, and that marks a little bit of a shift in the weather pattern. Out there in Quebec, well, yep, it would not be August 2023 without a big frontal system there around Montreal and Quebec City. So once again, they're getting rain and storms through the southern part of the province. The tropics, extremely quiet, which is kind of rare for mid-August. The eastern Pacific, though, that's going to start becoming active very quickly in the next five days. And you can see what's going on there. A couple of lows coming together and one strong one developing about a week from now near Acapulco. So that'll be kind of a wild card for late next week. A little bit of breaking news from the Climate Prediction Center. They've issued an updated hurricane outlook. And, yeah, that's going to change things a little bit out there. They're looking for an above-normal season. Possibly 14 to 21 named storms and 2 to 5 major hurricanes. And you can see those sea surface temperatures out there. Quite hot, 31 to 32 Celsius. That's 88 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit out there over the high seas in the Gulf of Mexico. And there we go. There's the sea surface temperature anomaly as of yesterday. Except for a few areas, pretty much everything is above normal. Gulf of Mexico, all the prime development areas, those are about 1 to 3 degrees above normal. So we're going to have to keep our eyes peeled. Let's take a look at the short term. This is a kind of messy chart, but this shows everything that we want to look at. You can see the intertropical convergence zone right there, defined by the higher vorticity values. Don't worry about this. That's not that important. The rest of it, yeah, that's the intertropical convergence zone. What we're watching for is these darker lobes and bulges to come westward out into the equatorial Atlantic. So we roll this forward into Sunday and Monday, going into next week. A little disturbance coming together, maybe right here. That's a little easterly wave. Looks like a, just not really much organization on that. A stronger one for late next week right there. So we'll have to monitor that as it moves to the west. But it does look like some little disturbance comes together in the gulf that pops up right around, around Saturday late next week. So that's probably the most immediate thing to keep an eye on. And, of course, all this developing weather out there in the eastern Pacific. And taking a look at that upper air chart, there's the subtropical ridge across the western gulf. And that does kind of represent what's called the heat dome. And unfortunately, that's one of those topics the media likes to throw around, the heat dome. And they talk about that as causing the hot weather, which is dumb science. When you've got very warm conditions down in the lower troposphere, your heights aloft will increase. And what actually causes the heat is different things, such as large-scale subsidence, downward motion. The mass continuity equation says that we can get that from upper-level convergence or low-level divergence. There's other factors like incoming shortwave, outgoing longwave radiation, the balance between those two. That's where we need models to figure that out. Also, the soil moisture the amount of moisture in the lower atmosphere, stuff like that. 
That's all what goes into a heat wave. So these upper level ridges, that's good for keeping track of where the hottest temperatures are. So we can go ahead and follow that along over the next several days. This is early next week. We get this troughing out there in the north central U.S., and that's why I'm concerned about the possibility of some severe weather in parts of the Midwest next week. You can see that subtropical ridge kind of extending into the central Rockies, still covering Texas. Now, there could be a little backdoor front coming into northeast Texas or north Texas, somewhere in there, that could bring some relief. Also, yeah, that could affect the southeastern U.S. as well, but we don't really know the details just yet. Going into late next week, that upper-level ridge still hanging on to the southwest and west Texas. So we're not completely clear of the heat. However, this northwesterly flow is a bit of a wild card. And we get to the end of the run there, 240 hours and we can see that that upper level high migrates to the Midwest, which is interesting because that carries most of the heat up north into the Interstate 70 area. And out there in Texas, Louisiana, they become under tropical easterly flow, which is a very common late summer pattern. So that alone may change the pattern in Texas a little bit, but this is pretty far out. This is August 21st. And of course, a lot could change. We could see that high remaining over Texas. Who knows? Anyway, we'll follow that and check back in on that on Monday and Wednesday. So why don't we take a look at where that heat wave will be? This is for tomorrow. Looking at 107 at Abilene and DFW. Some very warm weather as well. Up around Des Moines and a band of the hot weather extending from Alabama up towards Virginia. For Sunday, pretty much the same. Some cool weather starting up in the North Plains. For Monday, some of the cold weather moves south, so we're going to have a cold front driving south, remaining warm in Texas still. And look at those temperatures up in the Pacific Northwest. Looking at 103 for Portland and 108 for Medford. So, yeah, we haven't completely forgotten that area. And looks to be a repeat for Tuesday. You can see most of the cold weather is heading east. We've got this little tail end front. And the models, they do tend to not handle these very well in August. And that's also with respect to precipitation. There could be storms developing. And if they generate a sizable enough cold pool, that could drop that front even further south. So a lot just not known at this point. But you can see that ridge building in once again for Wednesday and for Thursday. The heat continues and looks like it starts migrating into the Midwest as we get towards the following weekend. So the radar right now not showing much at this time. The satellite also clear as well. Not much in the way of low cloud field. There's a few specks of convection right there. That's going to be small patches of towering cumulus, but nothing much going on. And we do have the convergence definitely up there in northeastern Kansas. The high resolution rapid refresh trying to break out some specks of convection here and there. But if we look at the wind field in far northeastern Kansas, yeah, there is the curvature, the turning, the shear for rotating storms, and not much capping. So we're not going to really write this off until around dark. And that's all I have for your Friday edition of Forecast Lab. Hope you enjoyed it, and I appreciate those comments from Wednesday. Hope you have a great weekend. We'll see you back here for the Monday show for the supporters and on Wednesday for everybody else. Take care. Bye-bye.